How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Division video. This is my first Vendor Weekly Reset video. I hope you enjoy it and if you do, a like would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to share as it does help bring in more traffic and it does help promote the video and the channel. If you find it useful, I'll be doing this every week. Let's see if we can get to maybe 2,000 views and maybe 100 likes. So hopefully uh, this will be of some use to you. So the first vendor is going to be in the White House. The White House and the one outside is the same vendor, so let's have a look and see what they have. So we have a purple here with not much going on. So you have the China Light Industries, and this has got 28% damage to Elite, so this is pretty nice. The top end of this, the top end of this goes to around 36-37%, so 28 is still respectable in that regard. So this is something you can recalibrate onto your armor. You have the Wyvern Gear Talon Tactical Holster, which is nothing special. You have the Military P614, you got Near Sighted. Receive 35% stability at the cost of 20% critical strike range and 20% optimal range. This isn't bad, especially if you're struggling to keep your weapon stable. This is a really nice perk and the sacrifices aren't too great. This does, however, require for electronics. It has 15% stability and the final perk protect and deploy is a little consequence. And finally you have the blueprint for the MP5 which is always worth picking up. Next up we are at the theatre and this vendor has available, let's have a look. We have the Richter and Kaiser GMBH backpack. Again, this one has 3.5% weapon damage with 8% cooldown reduction. Nothing really special here. It does have 20% explosive damage, so if you're using any skills that does have explosive damage as a perk, like the Seeker Mines or anything along those lines, this is actually really nice. This should also affect grenade damage, but again, there are other talents that are better suited. The 5.11 Tactical Hands give you 4% LMG, 4% Shotgun. Again, nothing really special there. You've got the Badger Tough Mask, which again is skippable. You've got the Overlord Armaments. Oh, you've got the Overlord Armaments. So this is actually pretty nice. You've got Hard Hitting, which gives 15% damage to Elites. Always nice, especially with how you're going to be encountering the elites anyway so this is something you can recalibrate onto your other set it's a really good it's a really good talent so definitely one that you should look out for it's only 2325 so definitely worth picking up and finally we have the blueprint for the backpack which you should be picking up have the vendor and this week they have a Petrov Defense Group body piece at 450. It gives you 382 skill power, 5% weapon damage, 5% crit chance, and 5% crit damage. It also has health on kill, which is a really nice talent. So this one is actually worth picking up, maybe a couple, uh, in order to transfer some of these stuff. 382 skill power isn't anything to scoff at. I know there are some that can give you like 6, 700. But still, 382 is pretty respectable. 5% weapon damage is respectable. And if you're going for that defensive build, Health on Kill is always a really good talent. So this one is actually pretty nice and might be worth picking up a few. China Lights Industries for knee pads. This has cooldown reduction. If you're going for that cooldown reduction build, 11% again is not nothing to scoff at. So definitely worth considering. Next up, we have the Murakami Industries Holster. And really there's nothing special here. 8% crit chance isn't bad, but not that great. We have the M700 Carbon, which has Jazz Hand at 10% reload speed. So not too bad, but definitely better perks out there. It has Ranger as a perk. For every 5 meters you are from the target, grants 2% weapon damage. Now for a marksman rifle, this is pretty awesome because you're generally fighting at long distances. So those long range combat warfares, the further you are, 
the more damage you get. It doesn't really say that there's a cap, so sky's your limit. So this is actually a pretty decent one. And again, we have a blueprint for the Javelina Mask replica. Again, definitely worth picking up, because why not? Bender is just over to the left. Let's have a see what he has. He has knee pads of 481. These have 20% armor regeneration. That's actually not a bad perk. Definitely something you can consider, but outside of that, the health isn't that great. So yeah, if you're not after the armor regeneration, then this is pretty much going to be something you can skip. This one has rifle damage at 9%. If you use rifles, it's not bad. Again, something I probably won't bother with. You have Badger Tough Mask, which has health 9000, health and kill 1321, and skill power. Again, it just hasn't rolled very well, and I would say there's no reason to have this. You have the ACR Rifle, which has fast hands, critical hits at a stack of 3% reload speed bonus, max stack to 20%, accurate, and double duty. Double duty while holstered. Reloading from empty gives you a 20% of your magazine back as free ammo. Can occur once every 30 seconds. It's not bad, but again, nothing special here. I wouldn't really waste any of your time with any of this stuff. Right, onwards to DZ South. Right, we have arrived at DZ South, and yes, you are seeing my character's arm through my body. It's been glitched like that for a while so far. So let's see what this vendor has from its stock. We have the Murakami Industries backpack. This has 3.854 bonus armor, not very special. Skill power is pretty low, so it's the critical hit damage, so skip. We have the Overlord, which has 3.5% crit chance, skip. We have the Wyvern Wear, which gives you 339 skill power. That's actually not half bad, it's definitely something you might want to consider. Calculated kills from cover reduce skill cooldown by 20%. This needs 7 or more skill power in order to activate. It's actually not a bad perk if you're going for that skill power build. It reminds me of that weapon you got from Amherst, the exotic. It skips my mind right now, but it was reducing your cooldown every time you got a kill, so definitely something you might want to consider if you are going for that skill power build. And considering skill power is broken right now, it's definitely something you might want to pick up for the future. Last of all, we've got the LVOAC, which they absolutely destroyed with the Ranger pack again, and Jazz Hands, exactly the same as before, with Waskali, which I still believe is a bonus perk. But that's me, right? And here we arrive at DZ East. Let's see what the vendor has in stock for us this week. DZ East 5.11 Tactical. It gives us 2% critical hit chance, 6% shotgun damage, but the talent is surgical. It gives 8% critical hit chance. This is actually pretty good if you're going for that critical hit build. So I think I'm going to actually purchase this one because I actually think this one could come in handy. We have the Murakami Industries for knee pads. This one gives bonus armor, it gives entrenched headshots from cover and repair 5% of the armor. That's actually pretty good. Using a rifle or marksman weapon is a requirement, so you can't use an assault rifle. But again, this is actually a pretty good pack if you can actually aim and are not a potato like me. Douglas and Harding mask. Critical hit chance and health, again nothing special there. And then the tactical super 19. Optimist, weapon damage is increased by 3% for every 10% ammo missing from the magazine. Not bad, and I can see this being quite useful, however it isn't for a DPS build. It's more for a defensive build, an armor build, because it's requiring low firearms. Again this has accurate for that 15% accuracy. And greased while holstered, weapon swap speed is increased by 10%. This is a nice perk to have, say, on your handgun, so when you're switching between your primary and secondary, it's 10% faster. So, all in all, not bad. But again, you wouldn't use the weapon.
prisoner. And for me, she is placed right here on the map, as you can see here. I'll zoom in as well on the trolley, so you can see the trolley. That is where it is in relevance to everywhere else. So she may appear different for you, but I believe it should be in the same place. If you don't have Cassie Mendoza up for you, you will have to do a snitch bounty, complete it, and then it should appear somewhere on your map. But if it's relative and global, her position should be in this place for the time being. However, she is due to disappear, as you can see in the timer. So, what does Cassie Mendoza have for sale? She has the Araldi Holdings hands, which are 489, so not too shabby. It has shotgun damage plus 10%, so if you're into shotguns, this is definitely something you will definitely want to look into, because it's pretty much the highest I've seen so far. Its talents is Terminate, depleting an enemy's armor grants 35% skill damage for 15 seconds, which isn't bad, but skill pad just doesn't work right now. We have the SR1 as a weapon. It has Vindictive as a talent. Killing an enemy with status effects applied grants all group members within 15 meters plus 20% critical hit chance for 10 seconds. Again, this is pretty great, but again, you need to rely on the enemies being under a status effect so yeah take that as you will definitely worth picking up if it is something you think you can use jazz hands again is just a usual 10 percent reload speed and the double duty we've already covered so that's pretty much that you have the mini electric motor which is for seeker mines you have the invisible hand which is an assault rifle its flavor text reads do i look like charity to you market forces at work you want what I've got, so let's make a deal. Cassie Mendoza, the gun runner. This one has on empty for talents. Reloading from empty grants 30% weapon handling for 10 seconds. Pretty awesome if you ask me. It's got Allegro, which is 10% rate of fire. Holy shit, this is actually pretty nice. And then Rooted. While equipped and in cover, all skill damage and healing is increased by 25% for 10 seconds. Buff is lost when exiting cover. Can occur once every 25 seconds. This is actually a really, really nice gun. It's a shame it's a 498 because I would have taken this straight to 515. But it is a really, really nice gun. So this is one I'd actually recommend. This is so far for me the highlight of the day. I don't think the MP5 is going to actually surpass this. Let's have a look. Again, it's just a submachine gun with critical hit chance. It has close and personal, killing a target within 7 meters, grants 50% weapon damage for 5 seconds. It's 5 seconds. It's great if you're surrounded, but otherwise it's a useless perk. It also has Allegro and Protected Reload. So, yeah, it comes close second, but for me, the Invisible Hand is definitely the winner of the show. This is definitely the one that you want to be going with. This is actually really, really nice. And I think I'm going to be buying a couple of these just because I want some of these perks for other weapons as well. 10% rate of fire from Allegro is nice on many things. On empty is actually quite nice if you're wanting that extra handling. For sniper rifles, this could actually be quite godly, for example. So here's one for me to actually buy the keep for myself Thanks a lot. and this one is for me to steal some perks and break it okay. and that is all for the vendor reset for this week I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have drop a like subscribe share and I'll see you in the next division 2 vendor reset video peace out agents remain legend <laughs>